So, be honest. When you saw that cola, you thought to yourself, really? That's it? I mean, it's pretty crazy just how easy it is to make. In fact, it's so easy that half of YouTube made their own Senku Cola. And while it's great that Dr. Stone gives you this recipe, it also skips a lot of important science. For example, how did Senku get his hands on carbon dioxide? Why did people decide to carbonate water in the first place? If you're like me and wanted to know more, then you'd have to look outside of Dr. Stone. That's why in this video, I'm going to walk through the history of how soda was made and then compare that to how Senku makes his cola. Before I get started, make sure to comment with your favorite inventions in Dr. Stone. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week in the next video. This week's comment comes from Yashas, who reminded us that Luffy almost read a book. If you'd like regular One Piece and Dr. Stone videos like this one, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can follow along with each week's video. With that out of the way, let's start with step one in Senku Cola. Seltzer. And this is basically where all of the magic of soda comes from. Odds are, if you make some soda, you'll just buy some seltzer from the store. Obviously, Senku can't really do that. He'd have to build a store, fill it with groceries, hire a clerk, it's a whole thing. So, the natural follow-up is how do you make seltzer? For that, we need to take a trip all the way back to the 1700s. Back then, people got their carbonated water from springs. Underground volcanoes release carbon dioxide, and then the carbon dioxide makes its way into spring water. Pretty simple, right? So then what's the problem? Well, the problem is nobody knew what the heck carbon dioxide was. Everyone just liked the spring water because it was fizzy, it had minerals, and it just tasted better. But nobody knew how to actually make it. At least, not until Joseph Priestley came around. Priestley was an English scientist who was studying gases and how they worked, or airs as he called them, since scientists back then were only just beginning to understand the different elements and their states. Priestley happened to live right next to a local brewery that had its own fizzy water, beer. By observing the beer making process, Priestley guessed that the ingredient that makes beer fizzy must be the same one that made spring water fizzy. He already knew that he could make this fixed air, as he called it, by adding oil of vitriol to chalk. Since I'm assuming you didn't study alchemy in college, odds are you have no clue what oil of vitriol is. Well, oil of vitriol is what we now know as sulfuric acid. And scientists back then discovered that they could obtain sulfuric acid by heating up certain metals that smelled like sulfur. So Priestley used chalk and sulfuric acid to make his carbon dioxide, and then added that carbon dioxide to water by using a pig bladder. Oddly enough, people complain that his water had a strange aftertaste to it. And it doesn't take a degree in alchemy to figure that one out for yourself. Also, on top of that, he called his experiment impregnating water, which I guess sounds smarter than effervescercizing it. Look, the dude was a weirdo. Let's just thank him for the fizzy water and move on. So, to make his fizzy water, Senku needs some carbon dioxide. Like we mentioned earlier, Priestley did this by adding sulfuric acid to chalk. Senku already has sulfuric acid, and as he explained to Taiju, he can get the calcium carbonate found in chalk from seashells. And from here, Senku can use these two ingredients to get carbon dioxide. At least, that's what I thought at first. After a quick Google search, I found a better explanation thanks to Stack Exchange user Gatchwar. A link to their post is in the description below. If you look carefully at the jar Senku uses, it's labeled sake. In other words, alcohol. And where did Mr. Priestley get his idea for fizzy water? A brewery. So this jar implies that Senku never bothered with sulfuric acid and calcium carbonate. It seems to be the case that Senku went the lazy route and used the fermentation process for alcohol. In the process of fermentation, glucose is converted into alcohol and carbon dioxide. It might be possible that Senku did go the sulfuric acid route and just happened to use this jar, but the fact that it's clearly labeled this way suggests that's not the case. Now, unlike Mr. Priestley, our friend Asagiri Gen probably doesn't want his cola tasting like pee. So, instead of a pig bladder, Senku goes the more hygienic route and decides to connect the jar and bamboo container using a hose. The carbon dioxide makes its way from the alcohol to the water, the two of them mix together thanks to the waterfall, and that's how we get carbonated water. 
Like I said, a lot of science for something you can go buy at the store. So we know how to make seltzer water, but there's still the question of what makes it different from regular water. Same thing for soda, beer, and anything else that's carbonated. Why do we like it better when it's fizzy and not flat? Again, the answer here is carbon dioxide, or technically speaking, carbonic acid. When water and carbon dioxide are mixed together, they create a compound called carbonic acid. When we drink carbonic acid, it triggers an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase 4, and that enzyme interacts with our sour taste bud cells. Simply put, carbonic acid makes water sour. Makes sense, right? Think about our other ingredient, lime. Limes are sour because they have their own acid, citrus acid. Speaking of which, now we can move on from seltzer and talk about the other ingredients. We're told that Senku Cola uses crushed cilantro, pressed lime peels, and caramel from honey. First, let's start with the crushed cilantro. Now, to be clear, there is a difference between cilantro and coriander. Cilantro is everything including the stem and leaves, while coriander refers to the seeds. Depending on where you live, you might just call the whole thing coriander. But this distinction is important because cilantro and coriander have different tastes. Coriander has a spicy taste to it, while cilantro actually has a more citrusy taste. Obviously, you don't want to mix up the two depending on your recipe. So, which did Senku use? Well, considering we're shown the whole plant, it seems Senku just crushed both together. Again, this is a matter of personal preference, so there's really no right or wrong way to do it. But this brings us to the other ingredients, lime and caramel. Again, like carbonic acid, the pressed lime peels give the cola a sour taste because of citric acid. Then you have the honey, which on its own has a sweet taste because of its natural sugars, fructose and glucose. But when slowly heated to make caramel, the sugars break down and the honey is given a bunch of new flavors. So when everything is mixed together, you actually get a very well-balanced recipe. The intense sweetness from caramel is balanced by the acidic flavors of the seltzer, lime, and cilantro. Then you have the spice from the coriander and the new flavors from the heated caramel that give the cola a more complex taste. And this careful harmony of flavors gives us that familiar taste of cola. Finally, we can't forget the soda bottle. Obviously, all Senku needs is a glass bottle and something to seal the top. We already know how Senku gets the glass thanks to his work with Kaseki. Then we see that Senku seals the deal with a cork. And like all good science, there's a bunch of steps in making corks. So for the sake of simplicity, just know that Senku would make his cork by harvesting the raw material from a cork tree. But with his bottle and cork, Senku has everything he needs for his cola. First, he adds carbon dioxide to water to make seltzer. Next, he adds lime, cilantro, and caramel to give it that classic cola flavor. Then he seals it in a bottle using a cork so that precious carbonic acid stays right where we want it. Now, Senku is ready to bless our friend Asagiri Gen with a delicious and refreshing Senku Cola. So, now you know all of the science behind the tastiest beverage in Dr. Stone. And that's it for this look at Senku Cola. Let me know which of the other inventions you'd like to see explained. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like. If you'd like more videos like this one, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to follow along with weekly One Piece and Dr. Stone videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.